Tower, helicopter 911, Hotel Romeo. It doesn't cost anything to call 911 for a payphone. I mean, think about it. If you're near a payphone in an emergency, the last thing you should have to do to call for help is fumble around for loose change. So don't. Just pick up the phone, any phone, and dial 911, but only if it's a real emergency. Be prepared to give them your name, the address you're calling from, which is printed right on the payphone, and what kind of help you need. Okay, thanks. Whoa, that was fast. One of the best things you can do to protect your family if a fire breaks out at home is to have an exit plan in place so you can get out of the house safely. Every member of the family should participate in making a plan so you're all familiar with it if there's a fire. Make sure everyone knows how to open the windows and doors, especially in the dark. Before opening the door, use the back of your hand to see if the door is hot. If it is, don't open it because there's probably a fire on the other side. Be extra careful when using windows to get out of the house. Leave the house immediately and don't go back inside for any reason. Be sure there are two exits out of every room and have a place for everyone to meet outside. Then you have to have regular fire drills, just like at school. It's a lot of fun and this way, it will be easier to remember the exit plan, especially if a fire happens in the middle of the night. Being smart about fire safety is everyone's business. Hi everybody, I'm Fireman Jim. You know, fire trucks weren't always as big and as powerful as the ones we have today. 
In fact, a long time ago, firefighters drove unprotected in wide open cabs and were sometimes exposed to bad weather and other harsh conditions. Before that, they actually had to push a large water pump to the fire by hand or they had to pull it by horses. Could you imagine what it would be like today if we still had to use horses to get to a fire? <laughs> that just wouldn't cut it. Fortunately, today we have the most advanced and most powerful firefighting equipment ever made. In the next half hour, we're going to take a look at some of these giant rescue rigs and how today's firefighters use them to battle the enemy known as fire. Who knows, maybe after watching this video, you might want to become a firefighter too, just like me. Come on everybody, let me show you what I'm talking about. Driving a fire truck is serious business. A lot of people think that all firefighters do is pull hose off the truck and squirt water, and that's not true. Today's firefighters play many different roles. For example, the driver engineer has two main functions. One is getting the truck and the crew to the scene quickly but safely. Their second responsibility is to stay with the truck and operate the giant pump, so the nozzle person gets just the right amount of water to put out the fire. The first thing we do when we arrive at the scene of a fire is to locate the closest fire hydrant. The hydrant person jumps off the truck and grabs what we call a supply line, which is a big fat fire hose that takes the water from the fire hydrant to the truck. The water is then pushed through a giant pump inside the truck that adds pressure to the water because the water may have to travel up to several hundred feet of fire hose before it gets to the firefighter that's working the nozzle. The driver engineer has to work the pump handles and monitor the gauges to properly balance the amount of water coming into the truck and the amount of water going out of the truck so that the nozzle person has just the right amount of water pressure to properly fight the fire. Once this is done, the nozzle person can now go to work putting out the fire. There are usually two firefighters on each hose, so they can help each other out. As you can see, firefighting is a team effort. The second firefighter helps control the hose and helps pull it through the house or the building, because fire hose can get very heavy. At every scene, there's usually one person in charge. These firefighters have the rank of lieutenant or captain because they have many years of firefighting experience. In an emergency situation, things can easily get out of control, and the lieutenant and captain helps keep everyone organized so that the firefighters can put the fire out safely. Now that you know about some of the different jobs that firefighters do, let's watch some real firefighters in action. Engine 62 is bombing. Station 58, Mountain Beach, Fire 1. Fire 1, go ahead. Engine 
Four be advised, confirmed fire, plane showing. EMS 55 responding. Check out this massive rescue rig. This is not your average everyday fire truck. This rig is designed for heavy rescue. It doesn't carry along hoses or water. Instead, it's equipped for some of our more unusual rescue situations like lifting or moving heavy objects. It also carries climbing equipment, scuba gear, and extra oxygen tanks. It weighs over 10 tons and has a 275 horsepower diesel engine. This heavy rescue rig is equipped for any emergency. Control ID 62, vision contact. When we come back, we're going to head out to the airport and take a look at the really awesome rescue rigs they use to fight airplane fires with. So stay tuned! When it's used properly, fire can be a very useful tool. We use it to cook with, heat our homes, and launch rockets into space. When it is abused or used the wrong way, fire can be very dangerous and even deadly force. That's why Fireman Jim's number one rule, never play with matches or fire. These are things that should only be handled by adults that know how to use fire properly. What's Fireman Jim's number one rule? Never play with Whether you're an adult or a child, knowing how to stop, drop, and roll can save your life. And if your clothes ever catch fire, stop what you're doing, drop to the ground, cover your face, and roll and continue to roll until the fire is completely out. I'm Fireman Jim reminding you that practicing your stop, drop, and roll is a really cool thing to do. Let's take a ride out to the airport now and take a look at what they call an aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicle. When an airplane fire happens, it takes a special kind of fire truck to put it out. The official name is Aircraft Rescue and Firefighting Vehicle, but firefighters just like to call them crash trucks, and they're a little different than the fire trucks we've seen so far. Crash one, you'll have to exit the taxiway ahead and stop the direction of the aircraft. They have all-wheel drive capability, and with those giant knobby tires, they can maneuver over steep slopes, uneven ground, and loose sand or snow at speeds up to 35 miles an hour. What an awesome rig! Where we have one minute. Crash trucks are designed to be driven and operated by just one firefighter, and they don't even have to get out of the truck to put the fire out. That's because crash trucks have specially designed nozzles and water cannons mounted either on top or the front of the truck. That's so they can start spraying water or a special kind of foam on the fire as soon as they pull up to it, whether it's on the runway or near a hangar. Responding. These rigs can spray several hundred gallons a minute, and the super powerful water cannons can shoot a stream of water over 300 feet. Have you ever seen anything so awesome? Control 111 
How would you like to have one of these bad boys at your next pool party? Talk about a squirt gun fight. It'd take you three days just to dry off. Here's one way to water the grass in a hurry. No wonder fire stations have the nicest lawns. We'll be on scene with refusal pay for it. These big rigs get thirsty in a hurry, but that's okay. There's always a fire hydrant close by to fill them back up again. Let's watch as these high-tech firefighters check the equipment to make sure it's in proper working order. With up to 3,000 gallons of water and 200 gallons of foam, these giant rescue rigs are lean, mean firefighting machines. This crash truck is really awesome. It has a boom on top that can extend into the air as high as 50 feet. Spraying water or foam from a higher angle makes it easier to cover a large area real fast. The boom has a special nozzle on the end of it called a snozzle. It can squirt water or foam in a straight line, or it can fan out and spray a wide area like an umbrella. Would you believe it even has a video camera built right in it so we can see what's happening when the boom is extended way up in the air? The driver engineer uses a joystick inside the cab to control the boom and the snozzle. This is also a high-tech firefighting machine. Having these amazing rescue rigs ready to respond at a moment's notice helps make flying one of the safest ways to travel. This truck was used recently in a training exercise at the Orlando International Airport in Orlando, Florida. One thing that firefighters do a lot of is training. We have to constantly practice putting out fires, so when the real one happens, we're in tip-top shape, both mentally and physically. That way, we can put the fire out quickly without anybody getting hurt. What you're about to see is called a disaster drill, which is a real big training exercise. This gives all the different emergency rescue agencies a chance to practice together, because as we all know, practice makes perfect. Here comes that snozzle truck. Watch how it squirts foam out of the end of the snozzle. This is awesome stuff. Remember now, this is only a drill, and these are trained professionals, so don't try this at home.
Emergency management officials will grade the participants in the exercise and let us know if there's any areas that need improvements. We're constantly striving to improve. In no time at all, dozens of rescue personnel arrive at the scene and quickly go to work at what they do best. With this much firefighting power, it doesn't take long at all to get things under control. Now that's what I call a giant rescue rig. Time to bring in the helicopters. This training exercise used both military and civilian helicopters to simulate the removal of injured patients. We have traffic in sight. Six major things. When using high-tech rescue rigs like helicopters, it's important that everyone works together as a team. Safety is always the highest priority, whether it's a training exercise or the real thing. 715, uh, on uh, turning, procedure turn, contact tower. F-4-6-8, Julian. Yes, sir, call Patrick, approach 13265. On this particular day, there's a 30 mile an hour wind blowing right across the runway, making it especially tricky for the pilots. Summer Cox, 715, approach. Truck, 715, contact departure. 715, contact departure. Yeah, we're passing six and a half for six this time, reach 826. That's a visual on the one three here, reach 826. Melbourne well, altimeter 29903. You're above my airspace, call Patrick approach on 132.65. Okay, In a minute, we're going to take a closer look at how helicopters help save thousands of lives every year. Keep watching, we're coming right back. Okay, and if I leave six, call Patrick, how would you? It's your 210 heading in Miami 24 1 If you ever find yourself in a smoke-filled room, the first thing you should do is get down low to the floor. This will not only allow you to breathe easier, but it will also help you to see where you're going. Being able to see things like doors and hallways will make it easier for you to follow your exit plan so you can get out of the house safely. So remember, if your room fills up with smoke, get down! No matter how powerful our firefighting equipment becomes, fire prevention will always be the best way to fight fires. And that's before they start. And that's where you could be a big help. You can help prevent a fire in your home by reminding adults to put matches and lighters up high out of reach of young children, making sure that space heaters are at least three feet away from curtains, furniture, or anything else that can burn. Checking electrical cords for broken wires or overloading, especially during the holidays when we're plugging in lights and playing with electrical toys. And lots of other things that can make your home fire safe. You can get more information about fire safety by looking up the National Fire Protection Association's website at www.nfpa.org. If you think about it, we should never have to come to your house. You can help make sure your home stays fire safe. Affirmative. There's nothing quite like a helicopter to get to a remote location in a hurry, especially if seconds count. When an accident occurs in a remote or distant location from the nearest hospital, it might be necessary to call in a helicopter to transport the patient to the closest emergency room. Helicopters can take off and land in almost any location, and many lives have been saved thanks to their ability to respond quickly in an emergency situation. 2994, thanks, and uh, slow down to 2000, reach. Rescue helicopter flight crews consist of specially trained nurses, pilots, and paramedics that take their jobs very seriously. These high-flying rescue rigs are equipped with the same medical devices as the ground ambulance. In fact, they're the equivalent of an ambulance in the sky. Just as on the ground, the ambulance in the sky has the right-of-way over all other traffic and the pilot is in constant contact with ground controllers to ensure the safety of the patient. Roger, we'll pick him up on TCAS. That's me, Fireman Jim, helping out on a routine surveillance mission. Having the ability to cover a lot of ground in a short period of time is definitely a lifesaver. The U.S. military uses some very large helicopters for search and rescue operations. One of the largest 
called the Jolly Green Giant, is one of the biggest helicopters in the world. Talk about an amazing rescue rig. No wonder they call it a giant. Also, at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, they frequently use helicopters in astronaut rescue training. If an accident ever occurs during a shuttle launch, helicopters would be an important part of the rescue mission. Our space program has an excellent safety record, and practicing with helicopters helps keep it that way. Patrick, do you have any traffic in our vicinity? Uh, looks like about 200 feet above us in a mile. 04 Melbourne Tower on the right base, runway 9 left, report Highway 192. Right base, runway 9 left, report 192, 04. 404 DME, 715. Extra 210 heading at Miami 24 1 for 905. Affirmative. 4000, top 2. 3265. The United States Coast Guard operates one of the finest search and rescue outfits in the world. These rescue heroes always go the extra mile. Even in bad weather, they can be counted on to get the job done. Patrick, 9560, Juliet, any chance working out at 8,000? They currently fly the HH-60 Jayhawk, one of the most advanced helicopters ever made. Okay, up to 5,000, heading 210 and cleared at mile for uh, Skyline 9560, Juliet. Tower, helicopter 911, Hotel Romeo. Many civilian rescue helicopters are based at local hospitals, like the First Flight Transport Team at Health First in Bavard County, Florida. These highly skilled professionals are standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even I feel better knowing they're available when needed. 911, Hotel Romeo, Mountain Turn. Good afternoon, sir. Helicopter 911, Hotel Romeo. Uh, how are you hearing this radio this afternoon? Loud and clear. 911 Hotel Romeo, thank you very much. So, how about it? Anybody out there want to become a firefighter? Or maybe a nurse? Or a pilot on a rescue helicopter? Working in emergency rescue operations is one of the most rewarding jobs there is. Whether it's putting out a fire or hoisting someone out of the middle of the ocean, there's nothing like helping a fellow human being, especially in a time of crisis. And everyone knows the world's a better place when we help each other out. I'm Fireman Jim reminding you to play safe and stay safe. Hey, anybody want to ride on a fire truck? Yeah! All right. Mr. Katie also on We are, uh, 1597. Copy. 1657. Go ahead. Station 57. Station 57, Mr. Fisher, go ahead. You got three men stand by at the station. Well, we got a 